You're getting streamed to right now, and Facebook's the like, stream okay, is live. Sounds good. The stream is live. All right, let's see if it shows up. Where is it? Oh, Canada the Guns Talk Show is live. Mm -hmm. Is it? It'll just right. work. Welcome to the yep, Canada it, the Guns Talk Show, episode 123, spring 2024. Hey, look, we're not dead. <laughs> Yet. Yet. Are so um, we, we, I, what exactly US, about this die. country inspires optimism right now? <laughs> oh, the the hey, budget yeah, came out. Children, <laughs> I, I need to have yeah, a, a modicum of, of optimism. <laughs> you you have brought children into this failing planet that is going to destroy itself. Someone's uh, got to do no, it. I'm planet, glad the, the planet will be the fine. In. The people on it, yeah, the people. Yes, on that's it indeed. I, I I often say that as well. That. Uh, Humans are arrogant to think that we're destroying the planet. We're not. We're destroying ourselves. Yeah. I think I saw a video that even if all nuclear weapons went off in one location at the same time, it'd be like, that'd be a big crater. Was that what a it... Kyrgyzstad video? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, if everything goes off at once, that'd be a big crater. And in however many thousands of millions of years, it would not be there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyways, we should, um, stuff. we should talk about gun stuff. Hey, have yeah. you gunned? Yes. Have any of you gunned? I, I have gunned. He, he, I'm into like knitting well, and stuff these days. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I'm into buying expensive pieces of plastic to affix to firearms, but do go on. Crazy, what have you gunned? So uh, I went to an IDPA match last weekend. Oh, Nice. Yep, it was my first time actually getting to shoot the optic gun that I bought in 2021 to shoot <laughs> optics division. <laughs> Good. That's a start. I uh, shot unclassified because I didn't have a chance to shoot the classifier, and I scored in the top half overall and the top half of optics, which is good, uh, especially Look since the very first stage that I did. The RO called stop as soon as I got to the second set of targets and informed me, you're shooting the wrong stage. And I'm like, no, I'm not. You told me they had three stages set up. There was left, center, and right because it was all just on one range. And I was shooting center stage. And so they'd set up like some targets that you had to shoot like first and then run around behind them to shoot other ones. Uh, and so I go shoot the middle targets and I go and shoot my first target on the second set there and the RO yell stop. And then when I unload, he's like, you shot the wrong stage. I'm like, no, I'm shooting the center. And he's like, no, you're shooting left. I'm like, no, I'm shooting the center stage. And then another guy pipes up and goes, I just shot left. And so the RO goes, oh, my bad. <laughs> I guess we're going to have to reshoot you then. And I'm like, great way to start the fucking thing off, stressing me the fuck out about this. <laughs> they were just they were just playing mind games. They were playing 4D chess with you. But uh, yeah, so I shot that, did decently well. There was one stage where there was 11 targets and we had to get headshots on every one of them, one-handed from 10 yards. Uh, I was one of the only people in my group of shooters who didn't miss anything <laughs> when shooting that. So Everyone there were 11 targets missing. or like, did you have to like stay in one spot or did you, could you, you move? could move, but I found actually that you could see all 11 from this one spot. So I just stood in the one spot, arm out and just shot the targets. There were no shoots in front did of them you, when uh... I did that stage earlier. Cause basically the first stage was like, shoot some four targets on a thing and then run behind them and go shoot the stage. So when I did essentially that same stage earlier with two hands i think i hit the no shoots twice by accident um but when i did it with one hand i managed to not hit any no shoots and just stood in one center position the whole time so that's always yeah. nice so did you just did you just pick like okay let's start left to right and that's it pretty much yeah because they were like oh well the, the stage description was oh there's zombies and so there's no specific threat level to any of them shoot whatever go ahead and so i'm like okay i can just stand here and don't need to take cover for whatever because there's no returning fire to theoretically worry about and so i just all right bang 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 i took two shots at each head just to make sure i hit them which was a good idea because some of them i hadn't hit 
the first time. Um, and yeah, I think I got down two on that stage, maybe. Good. Which uh, is pretty decent. I got an IDPA match coming up this Friday as well. Or Saturday, sorry, not Friday. Study P match is all over the place. Yeah, this one's a pretty big one. I'm going to be shooting my sink. And so I actually have this out to clean it sometime on the show because uh, uh, it was, I went out and shot it over the weekend and it was being a bit weird. Um, oh, that's a sig sig, right? Not a Noranko Yes, th this one is actually made in Germany. <laughs> the, this, this was apparently the last run of 226s where they made slide and frame in Germany. Um, but I was actually finding it was sluggish on um, slide movement. And with this one Sig Sauer branded magazine that I have here, because most of my other ones are Mechgar, first two shots in this were not feeding. Um, it was weird. So I think I need to clean this because I don't remember the last time I have cleaned it. So that means it's been at least two years, if not three. <laughs> since I've last done that. So I uh, will clean this at some point before the match. Um, hoping to get out to the range tomorrow night, get a little bit more practice in. Um, just because, I mean, the issue when you have, like, my, my gun with an optic on, it's a canic, so it's striker fired. And so you've got consistent, probably five and a half pound trigger pull every time. With this, iron sights and double action is you know, 10 and a half pounds, the first pull. So one of the things I want to practice more of, and actually what I was doing over the weekend was just when it's cocked, just run the decocker and then practice basically first shot engagement there with that horrible Good idea. double. Fucking just practice your draw at the same pull. time because you're, you're, you're always going to be taking that shot right off the draw. So you might as well put it in a holster and then practice the like dry fire practice the draw and the shot. So dry fire practice, I I should do that actually in my apartment. Uh, at the range, I can't because my range doesn't let you holster when you are behind a static firing line. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but like dry fire is for home, right? That's that's what you do in yeah. your house. Put up a yeah, couple targets I mean, like, around I, the I house. I can't and... do like the the up like fire and then decock back in the holster. And all that at the range, not on the one I was on, at least. Um, yeah, at, at home, I did that also with my Canic. I was practicing, you know, first shot engagements with the Canic, which, you know, it's striker fired. So it's whatever, you know, you whatever and pull. So, yeah, I, I, I did some just of dry fire. I'm going to, again, also before that, do, like you said, draw and fire uh, engagements, because then you get the muscle memory down of, of, the draw as well. Um, I don't know how many stages there are going to be that uh, are going to involve one-handed shooting, um, if any at all, because it's not super common to actually have that uh, in a match. And I'm not expecting to shoot a classifier with this, which the classifier in IDPA, you do shoot one five-shot string one-handed. Um I don't need yeah. to classify with this because I classified within the last year and shot a match within the last year in this category, which is a standard service pistol. So I don't need to shoot the classifier. Um, frankly, I'm not sure if I would even go up rank shooting the classifier, but you know, if I do well enough at the competition, I can get the, the promotion up in classification from uh, my performance. Promoted. So hopefully I'm, going to try and aim for that i might shoot the classifier on optics just because i haven't done it before i need to see am i marksman or am i sharpshooter um and you know be optimistic that maybe i'll classify sharpshooter this time um other than that i've also um had a chance to do the rso course at my range which to shoot by yourself on the range that I joined, you have to be an RSO, which is annoying. Um, so I did the RSO course, and then they want left. you. 
Yeah, welcome to Ontario. All the ranges fucking suck. Um, this one's better than my last one where like they had no action ranges at all and no rapid fire and no this and no that. And at least this range doesn't fucking care. And once I get RSO, I can go on to all the action ranges and shoot whenever the fuck I want, except you can't shoot outdoors on Sundays because Jesus. Sure. <laughs> fucking Jesus. Because Jesus. Uh, you can shoot indoors. They have two indoor ranges, a 50 and a 25. So can go and shoot the indoors on Sunday. You can't shoot outdoors um, because Jesus. Wow. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I've I've done my – after you do the course, you have to do supervised RSO sessions with the chief RSOs so they can make sure you're not an idiot. So I did my first one of those over the weekend, and I'm hoping to get them all done if I can by the end of the month. Um if I can't by the end of this month, then hopefully by mid next month, just because I want to be able to go out on my birthday and shoot by myself on wherever the fuck. Yeah. Uh, and also really want to be able to go out on the action ranges and like do proper practice of action shooting. Cause like you don't get practice of like multiple target engagements and moving and shooting and around barricades and stuff like that from a fucking static firing position. You, you just can't do it. Uh, so I what's what's your ranges rules around like starting a, a fun night league or something like that? Like, have you thought about that? That's that's the way to get that kind of practice in fun. Uh, yeah, um, fun. They, they, I don't think they know. I don't think they know what fun is. The range has no problem. Like people have done that in the past uh, around there and they've got mm -hmm. like IDPA like the IDP match I shot is just kind of like, oh, hey, let's run an IDPA match here. Like they were running an IDPA match once a month or twice a month every month over the winter. And I only found out about it in February uh, and I wasn't able to sign up for the February one. So I was able to get in March, April or so. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. So like they, they do that. And uh, my range has action shotgun as well. Like someone started up an action shotgun league cool. at my range. Yeah which oh, I cool. signed up for that. So I'm going to be, I need to what actually go sign for up for the action shotgun competition. So oh, what am I using Versamax. for? <laughs> so uh, I've got the Versamax and I still have that. I still haven't put on the mag you sent me for the extended mag for it. The fucking front bead fell off that Versamax. It snapped off. It must have got caught on something in my safe and snapped the fucking plastic bead off the front. And I haven't bothered to good. go find a replacement front sight yet, but... Uh, I was actually get one of those clip shoot. on ones. Get, get the clip on to, high visible. Get the, but, yeah. Exactly what yeah. I was going to get. Um, but uh, what I was actually thinking of going to this action shotgun match with is my lever action with the extended mag tube. <laughs> Just because oh, no. who the fuck else is going to show up to this with a lever action shotgun? <laughs> yeah, no one's well, that well, dumb. Well, 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 exactly. That I'm going to be the only person <laughs> stupid enough to show up with a lever action shotgun from turkey that costs 300 fucking dollars and barely works <laughs> i mean if it works you can say that uh you know you really show everybody yeah. and the thing with it is it works as long as you treat it the way chris brown treats women <laughs> like i've Dang. i've had people shoot that and they baby it on opening and it doesn't kick the shell out and i go beat the fuck out of it like sh work it with some goddamn authority or it's not gonna eject that reminds me of the 1887 Norinco clones that I had, like because those were designed with two and a half inch shells in mind. So even even like a two and three quarter inch hull, like unless you fucked rack that uh, lever, it just, just yeah, the shell would they, just sit right they, there on the edge. They just copied mm -hmm. Browning's design from back in the day, and back in the day it was designed on a two and a half. So yeah. Also, I got uh, gear for three gun. Yeah, so buddy. The, uh, Chinese Type 81 uh, chest rig. So <laughs> four Gamer mag, gear. Four yep. proper mag pouches and then two smaller pouches on the sides for a Snickers bar or an apple. or. How many <laughs> Type 81 mags do you have? I have yeah, six. Enough, apparently. Nice. Mm, so that's right. exactly the capacity of one magazine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I have enough magazines to make up for our mag laws for one <laughs> 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 but i mean these are also fairly popular with people for using stanag as well so like i've got a couple lars that are uh, coupled together 
I just don't have anything at the moment that can shoot them legally. <laughs> that that it was one thing I was hoping to fix this year until I decided that I hate my Ford Focus and I'm planning to buy a Mazda CX-30. So uh, a lot so of gunshots kind so of going you Guys in your fucking expensive vehicles, my God. You, 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 you could buy a crate of Brent 2s or a car. I mean... <laughs> Exactly. And uh, my parents won't lend me the money for Bren 2s. <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, yeah, so that's going to hamper my plans a little bit for some things. Uh, enough so that I've actually been thinking about, like, what can I sell that I have that I might not want or need anymore? And the problem is I don't want to sell a lot of my surplus stuff because, yeah, I can get $1,200 for my SVT-40, when the fuck am I going to get another one? <laughs> I had the same thought until I realized that having shit sitting on the wall looking pretty was just, just, I just now. Oh no, I'd now. like going out and shooting my SVT as well. It's a fun gun to shoot. I like that's it. That's true. That's my K98. I've also thought about selling, and that's another one where it's like, yes, I bought this for two hundred and fifty dollars, and I could sell this for two thousand dollars probably. Yeah, that sounds about uh, right. Yeah. But again, when am I going to get another K98? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not. And I still have probably 300 rounds or so of 8 mil uh, to go through and haven't finished sighting that K98. But yeah, it, like when I looked at it, I'm like, I could sell my Hawa and I'll have technically nothing legal to shoot 223 out of. I, I won't have a coyote gun anymore. Um, and I, I already got rid of that shotgun. Adriel, it, you have to talk to Crover about that because he yeah, has that. sitting in my work safe. <laughs> um, but yeah, the only one I really look at is like, well, I got this Chinese 22, this bolt action Chinese 22 that like a J dot. What kind? What kind are we talking here? It's I think that like Scorpion E M whatever. Oh, the, the short one, like the 13 inch one. Yeah, it's it's not super short, but it's pretty short. They they I think they claimed it was a clone of an Anschutz, and it was like I don't know, 180 bucks new. And I have a couple. Sell it to Adriel. It. You, you can use that one for work because if it's the thing that I think it is, you can literally like twist the uh, the bolt, and then the firing pin is just sitting in there, and you just take it out, put the bolt back together, and it's good to go. I, I, I already too. got three bolts. I, I'll show you my third one today. If, I mean, I can go grab it out of the safe, but yeah, yeah I mean, fine. nah, but yeah, I've been thinking about getting rid of that for like, I don't know, 150, just, I don't shoot it much. I don't, I got it. Cause I'm like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. I can go practice with this and then go shoot maple seed. And then I'm not going to shoot maple seed with it. And I don't practice with it. And so just, okay, let's just get rid of it. It's genuinely just taking up space in my gun safe. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's kind of what's gone on with me and guns. And another thing that's been sucking up all my gun money is my motorcycle. <laughs> we told you, you should never that, have that bought was, that thing. That, and I should, honestly, by this point, I put so much money into it that I really should have just spent all that money and bought something that is better and newer. Because, yeah, I had a great time riding that thing down to New Orleans, and I was astounded it made it and only broke its speedometer on the way back on the last day in New York. Um but then that led to the thing of, okay, great. The speedometer is broken and it has an oil leak now that it's come back from there. So I have to tear the speedometer open, fix it. Okay, that didn't fix it. Time to go buy new speedometer gear, new speedometer cable, buy some more of the rubber new? seals for around there. I had to go buy uh, valve cover gaskets. I still have to put the valve cover gaskets on because I have to take the radiator off to get at the valve covers and the gas tank. No. Um, no. So, yeah, I got a bunch of shit that still needs to be done to it, but that, that's, uh, a I had a, I was, that's a lot of words for just I need to sell it. I had a fuel line blow on it while I you was going to, to ride that. it. The fuel um, line's cheap. That's that's a cheap fix. The only annoying thing with that, I had fuel line. I didn't have it where my bike is. My parents' bike. I had it here and I brought it over. Uh, it's a Japanese bike. And so I found out that, oh, hey, wouldn't you know it? It happens to use metric fuel line to go into the carburetors. It apparently uses seven millimeter fuel line to go into the carburetors. And seven millimeter is ever so slightly larger than quarter inch, which made getting quarter inch fuel line onto it an absolute bitch. Mm -hmm. I eventually did it. 
but I will need to replace it or it will eventually stress fracture and start spewing fuel all over my engine again. You should sell it like this and then not tell the guy. Uh, the, it, it's going to be fairly noticeable. Sell the bike, get new car, one vehicle. See, the problem with this is I've thought about getting rid of the bike realistically even if after I replaced the leaky oil gasket, I could probably get 2500 for it. Nowhere near what I've put into it, sunk cost fallacy and all that. The problem becomes then I lapse my motorcycle insurance and I don't know when I'd get the next bike again. So I would essentially be coming back into motorcycle insurance and the insurance companies would consider me to have no insurance history. But which motorbike makes insurance, insurance motorbike insurance is like a hundred bucks a year. Like who cares? No, it's not. <laughs> not in Ontario. Why? Why? It's because like I'm it's in hundred bucks. Because I'm here. in Toronto. Oh. But like is that with like uh, comprehensive or uh so I managed to get astoundingly cheap insurance on this bike uh for literally nothing. I have I have no fucking coverage except what is the legal minimum requirement. Yeah. That should be I like 120 pay, bucks a year. No, I pay 950 a year. Oh, and that is, to Alberta. So this that is, that is the money here. cheapest I could find for it. You and, need and to sell that fucking thing and like, move to Alberta. My car, mm -hmm. I pay twenty seven hundred for comprehensive. Like insurance in this province is atrocious. That's why I said before the thing about like JDM cars, how I've wanted one for ages. They are all considered by law to be high risk vehicles, meaning that my insurance history doesn't fucking matter. It would be like eight hundred dollars a fucking month to insure a JDM vehicle in Ontario. Because oh, mine, you have I'm to just, go through high risk insurance. I'm just doing liability only on mine. Eight hundred bucks a year. Yeah, no, it, that's <laughs> not how the shit works in Toronto. Unfortunately, that is not what I'm paying. <laughs> well, but, move like I like I, there's there's jobs have, out here. There's apartments so you can buy a townhouse out here for like 160, 180 grand. So I in I looked in because Alberta's running fucking ads in Ontario right now, telling uh -huh. people to move to Alberta. I checked the government's website for this and check the government's job board for this. The Alberta government job board for like, this isn't government jobs. This is jobs <laughs> that the government is posting out for people to apply to. It is absolute dog shit. Yeah, that's for sure. You got to go private. You got to go private. It is atrocious. And, Come on and here. I'll, I'll get you a job out here. You want, you want a job in MSP? I'll get you a job. Uh, you go, so you, yeah, you I, just I, save up a, the, the down payment for a $180,000 townhouse. And they are, they are here. And uh, you could own, not rent, for less than what you're renting I know for right now. Even a couple years back, I was looking at not even townhouses. There were detached houses in Edmonton that were under $200,000. Oh, you wouldn't want They're those. They're probably not but... <laughs> there now, and you probably would also tell me don't live in those areas, but no. there were detached houses in Edmonton for under $200,000. None in Calgary, you could... though. You could well, get no, 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 no. See, Angel, three. there is an advantage to those houses in those locations. He could practice three gunning in those locations. <laughs> you want to practice room clearing? You're going to get a lot of practice. <laughs> I, I just hear a crack in the window there, and I just yell, "Shooter, are you ready? He's going to stand get... by." He's Beep. Gonna... <laughs> He's going to get real good at short stocking guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, and. Uh, you wouldn't be able to shoot as much IDPA. I don't think you'd be able to shoot any IDPA. There are, you'd shoot a lot a more three guns. Yeah, their three gun would be fun. There's a couple of clubs I've seen in Calgary that do shoot IDPA. Um, yes, I mean, I could probably get into IPSIC for a lot cheaper out in Alberta than what I can here because I assume the black badge is probably cheaper to do in Alberta than it is. Oh, no, no, no. 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 It's funny you should no, mention I, that. I literally I, just went through this. I just went through this. I priced it out between ammo and gear. And the course, it's like eight hundred dollars. Okay, well, so it's the, the same is very expensive. expensive. Yeah, because you you have to bring a thousand rounds to a fucking black badge course, and so you got that's three hundred and some shit. Uh, right yeah, there. No, when I saw it, I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" It's like, why? That's they're asking you to bring that much. You're never going to go through a thousand yeah, rounds. Because like, I've I've got all the gear already. I've got a holster. I've got two mag pouches that hold four mags. Mm -hmm. I've got five mags for my guns. No, I know, I know. Whatever. I just I just so. like a, a guy linked me the thing. He's like, oh, check it out. There's a black badge course, so you can shoot Ipsic. Like, okay, let's see what. It'll... Oh, fuck that. Yeah, that's that's why I and haven't done days. it because two yeah. days, two that's fucking the good... days, like. 
I, d- I disagree entirely. Two days for what was it? Two twenty five for just the course. Two two twenty five. Two fifty. How much was it? Uh, it must have been. I guess somewhere around there. So probably. that is a bargain when it comes to shooting training. Like a lot of shooting training is two hundred dollars a day. That's the rack there, rate. There so is to do a black course. badge. Two twenty five for two days. Decent. Ignore the I mean, ammo cost. Yeah. Uh, the ammo cost because yeah, you got to bring a fucking crate and that's three fifty. The cheapest you're not gonna, I've seen right now is FOC. They've got you're it for three thirty nine. You're going to shoot two hundred to four hundred rounds. You're not going to shoot a thousand. But I mean, that's they still the thing. Of when that they tell you to bring it, you've got to have the money to yeah. spend to bring it. But but and like it's... that's because like any course, they're always going to tell you to bring double what you actually need because you're going to lose some, and they just assume you're retarded, right? So they're they're saying you know we <laughs> you actually need four hundred, but bring a thousand because fuck you, you you know maybe you're going to miss a bunch. Who knows? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I've thought about black badge for ages, and every time I just look at the cost, I'm like, "Fuck that!" IDPA cost me forty dollars in membership, and I did a holster course through another club I was a part of yeah. at the time, and that's been it's good cheaper. enough to to get into it the whole time through it. Like, the, there's also the match fees. Like, the match I'm doing is a big match. It's sponsored. It's got prizes and everything. And it was ninety dollar so, entry uh, fee. It's, uh, the course is three fifty. Three fifty. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's gone up. Uh, that's just what? expected. That black badge, Alberta. It can't just oh, be 350. Shit, Dave just dropped. Yeah, I, I'd imagine it varies depending on who's doing it. Yeah, 350 would just not surprise me for Ontario, like at all. Oh, hey, welcome back. Uh, so the course is 350. One? Oh, 345 per student. Yep, price is up. Holy shit, that's expensive. And a thousand rounds there. Of ammo. And if you don't have your fucking gear and a holster, and it's you're gonna I, need I that stuff. Yeah, I mean, gear, the gear and the holster. It's like no, what you I, know, get it. I get it. I have the ammo. I have the thing. But like two fucking days. I like to spend two days with people. I hate no. <laughs> well, and then especially if it's like you know you're outdoors in August. It's thirty five degrees, and you're outdoors for fucking nine hours the of the day. And fucking Boo. sweltering sun. Boo. Fucking get out there. There is, there is Andrew. That's it. No, yeah, I get it. Like, I, I would love to do it. It's just like that. That's one of the weekends that I am actually not working, and <laughs> my, you know, family expects me to be with them sometimes. Business expense. God, imagine having a family <laughs> that you had obligations <laughs> to. Uh, Sorry, uh, this believe it or not, I, I, I can training. I can, I mean, sweetie, how can I expand my clientele and offer more uh, services if I don't take this course? Exactly. I, I I need you need this in order to be able to better train your students for the realistic realities of firearms ownership in Canada. You're going to get people asking I, you about I, IPSC, well, and you'll be well, able well, to you know, explain you know, it to them from a first person. You say that, and uh, you say that, and uh, you want to see a, you you want to see a business expense. There's a business expense. <laughs> <laughs> use it in the course once. It's a business expense. I use it in the course once. It's a business expense. Business expense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like YouTubers. It, the fucking fat electrician was like, you see this couch over here? That's my tax write-off couch. I put something on there as part of the scene. I can write <laughs> it off on my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, yeah. Crover? But, uh, Adrian, what have you been up to? Oh, and, wow. Yeah, I know. Crazy. Are you yep. done, Gun? Yeah, it's I'm, I'm, I'm done, done there pretty much. I mean, other than the I'm fact done. that I bought Angel. you one and, and had to go through a fun thing of butchering a we'll get fucking there. Don't worry. It's, it's sitting at my feet over here. Don't worry. Adriel, what have you done? Not Black Badge. I did mine back when they were $200, and apparently they're $350 now. Shut uh, the fuck up. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, wow, that is expensive. I, uh, I'm going to do Pal Courses now. Got one coming what? up this weekend. More Sold out. What? one two weekends ago. Yep. That one sold out. Yep. Yeah. How many Doing people do you have things. this weekend? What's that? How many 12. people do you have this weekend? 12. 12? I have 22. I'm just doing it with one instructor, though. I have three. One, one, yeah. one with me. Yeah. 
Yeah, typically I do um, two, but uh, this weekend I might do one. I don't know. How many signups do you typically have the week leading up? I seem to get like a third to half the signups just in the week leading up to the course. I, I if, if I have room, I would be throwing probably 12 people into a course in that week leading up to mm -hmm. it if I have it open. And even yeah. with my website saying that the classes is full, I still get people emailing me, can I get into the yeah. class this weekend? I'm like... Yeah, I got a lot of people. Uh, oh, they've got a job thing. Um, they're going up to none of it and they need they're restricted because yep. they're going to carry while they're doing like field work. I'm like, well, that sounds fucking cool. I wish I could do that. But <laughs> yeah, aren't they lucky? yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. Okay, well, so you know yeah, what? You know, I still don't know anybody that's actually gone through that, but we can talk about that later. Well, they were cool. going through it. Yeah, they I, I'd imagine I'm going to yeah. get more of those than you because I'm a little bit closer to the north and there's nothing north of me. There's yeah. nothing north of me. So I'm going to get a lot of people who are uh, in the Northwest Territories, Yukon, none of it, that uh, that need that, uh, so that are pal. whose kid are you voting? Because you don't get revolvers, mister. I hate fucking revolvers. Yeah, uh, Ahia. Ahia's kit. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Until I can the do and, uh, one of the other, one of the other instructors that uh, that's been instructing with me, he has a, an RPAL kit. Just one though, so like three nice. three handguns. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I wanted to show you one of the guns I got for an RPAL gun. Uh, it was sold to me as a Ooh. 303 Enfield. I'm like, okay, yeah, great. I'll I'll, I'll take another one of those. It's a, a P14 oh. uh, 303 Enfield, which is uh, kind of different. What but the hell? what's that? It's a Mauser. It's what a Mauser action. Oh, that was a uh, crazy. No, I know, but what was that? No, it's not like a guitar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe he's playing okay. Guitar Hero or something like that over there. Uh, anyways, so uh, instead of three hundred three. No, three hundred three. It the okay. action is is made for something a lot stronger than three hundred three though. You could run like some hot shit in here. Uh, you want to see how to disable this thing? No, Let this doesn't do. work on my other Mauser, but. Uh, uh, you just pull the firing pin up on, on top of the cap there, and then you just start unscrewing it. And uh, oh. Oh, th there goes the firing pin and the spring. And yeah, I just don't need that, right? Just need it to feed and uh, be able to use the safety, right? So, uh, uh, ta -da! I am getting there's the safety right there. Uh... <laughs> oh, oh, it locks the bolt. Well, you know, the safety's on if the bolt's on. Okay, you flip that thing up, and then the safety's off. You don't get a click with it, but uh. It's safe. Fuck and... you. Okay, I'm getting one of those. I'm getting yeah. one of those. Yeah. Did I show you the win the Winchester yeah. Wildcat? Yeah. Is crazy good for that as well for a semi-auto. Anyways, this is PAL instructor stuff. It's Honestly, the Ruger PC Carbine is another decent one to use for a semi-auto because you don't need to do any. You don't need to fuck with it. You can literally, um, you can pull the. Um, it just takes a while out of it. It, it. it takes a while to get to the guts, right? Uh, yeah. To uh, to get there, it takes a while. Yeah, I okay. just know there's some things where it's like you you have to brutalize the gun in order to be able to disable it for the course. And yeah. I know the Ruger, you don't have to brutalize it. You can leave nope. the thing fully intact and just take the firing pin out. Yeah, yeah, that's that's nice when you can do that. Or I mean, this is by far the fastest one I've got. That <laughs> you could just do that, dude. Just blah, out she comes. Uh, even the, the Enfield 303 is like that one. The firing pin is a little bit hard to get out. Right. But this one super easy. Uh, I broke the piston on this thing. Uh, finally after many thousands of rounds, but, uh, got it back up and running again. So that guy is back up. And then just yesterday, this receiver set came in the mail. Well, it's not a receiver set anymore. Now it is a gun. Now it is a uh the break isn't timed quite just yet i'm just i'm still in the process of a couple things but uh this is the lockhart tactical raven the gold builders kit and uh it's pretty fucking good you've probably already seen this crazy all the goodness that uh that is the the lockhart raven uh i haven't really looked into it too much just because i can't afford do you have an ar <laughs> i do have an ar yes um, I still have my AR. So I took all the parts from my AR and I put it on this. And it takes a DI barrel. It's direct impingement. Mm. Uh, there is no piston. And I got to run my sexy 
uh, MRA handguard, which I wanted a three gun match. And I haven't been able to use for so long because it doesn't fit on anything that's got a gas block because there's not enough room for it. But now it's got room. So I've got it on there and a bunch of other AR parts on there as well. Uh, it's set up for side charging right now. If you want to buy like the rear charger for it from uh, Lockhart, it costs some buku bucks. So I haven't got that just yet. Um, so this but, sounds uh, like that one dude on fucking Reddit who asked, what if we just made a uh, the 180 but had more of an AR style top to it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much what we got going here. Uh, so... <clears throat> yeah, uh, DI upper, uh, a standard BCG, but it's not a standard BCG. It's like a proprietary one, proprietary firing pin. But you use your bolt, you use your barrel, you use your gas tube, which for me was the big thing because I've got like this Gucci. This bear was 450 bucks. Like it's a nice yeah. barrel. Damn, uh, I right. was getting like an inch with it uh, with my AR. And that's what I expect with this setup because regardless what's happening here, my bolt and my barrel are the same as before and they're they're the same high quality components and i expect and that's really all the firing action happening here is the bolt and the barrels so i expect to get my one moa back with this thing maybe not with this scope but uh with another, another scope on this thing um I mean, did you buy uh did you buy the gun with a fancy trigger or did you just buy something whatever and put something else in builder's kit i went builder's kit because I have fancy stuff and I didn't need uh, the barrels that, that came with the uh, the full rifles uh, had some problems. So you'd need to replace your barrel anyways. And the triggers that they came with were seven pounds, something like that. So, right. Yeah, I opted for uh, my own, but it's got your same break open, just like a, an AR and same same idea with your bolt that comes out there and all that stuff. The magazine well is separate. So if you wanted to, you could have the same lower uh, mate with a nine millimeter or two two three or three oh eight uh, upper. Does three oh eight work on the same lower receiver? That is correct. Nice. Oh, I didn't know they had a three oh eight uh, magwell and upper. Yep. So uh, rather than pulling that rear pin there, you pull. Uh, you pull this one. This one and this one, and the lower comes off. And then you have the upper and uh, the magwell. Uh, magwell, and then your lower and the buttstock come separate. So you can have separate uppers that have magwells on them, and you can just pop it together, and uh, and off you go. It's just too bad that the company itself is such shit. Like, the, the owner of the company is... Uh, <laughs> uh, their customer service is, is not great. It like I ordered this thing a month ago, uh, no more than a month, a month and like a week ago, and like no comms until like a month later. And it's like, oh, your gun's in the mail. And that's thanks. Good, that's good service. That's good service. Uh, yeah, there's a trigger tech in there. This is one of their uh, uh, Black Friday Day specials. It's a single stage, three and a half pound. Uh, Oh, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Single stage three and a half. That's what I've got uh, in my AR. Yep. Oh, uh, I followed your go. advice, by the way. You'll see what I mean later. I followed your advice, Adriel. Uh, bolt hold open. You, you'll see that I had to mod that to get it low enough to get under that shelf there. Uh, okay. So you don't quite get the full size. And... This charging handle, sorry, I can't see what the fuck I'm doing because I'm doing this. Your charging handle kind of like it, you get close to that thing. So you do need, I'm going to need to smooth this uh, this out a little bit so I don't scrape up my finger. Why didn't you just get the T handle? Oh, wait, how much is it? Fucking 200 bucks. Yeah, you want the T handle? <laughs> Someone had a, a bunch made up in China and they're selling them for 100 bucks a pop on Gunpost or some shit. And then there's a, a, a DPMS version that you can mod that's also 100 bucks. Fuck that. I'm not spending 100 bucks on that. I'll use a side charger. I don't care. It's it's fine. Uh, and then the other I thing mean, you I might mean, notice quality of life improvement. Don't you think it's worth it? No, not for that. I mean, it's like Maybe. when there was fucking TNA who was selling fucking AK safeties for the Type 81. They wanted. No, like no, no. Those were, those were non functional cosmetic items. This is functional. That's a charging handle. Yeah. 
I don't mind the side charger because if I if I pop a mag in, it's faster for me to go up here than to go back here. So I may just leave it. And besides, it's going to be like the mat that's going to be locked back, right? So I'm just going to go like that and hit it and let it go. Hmm. Oh, it's nice to hear that spring of the buffer tube. <laughs> the buffer sp spring scraping <laughs> on the inside there. <laughs> I need to oil it or something like that. Uh, hey, you could just go baller status and get one of those G G GPs capture spring things that are like $500. Nah, nah. Ah. I'll deal with the sound. Like this, this as much as like I was building this with a buddy and he's like being real careful. I'm like, dude, I'm going to beat the fuck out of this rifle. This is going to be a three gun rifle. It is not going to have a good life. Don't like who I don't want to scratch. it. I'm like, I'm going to scratch a fuck out of this thing. It's going to get thrown into dump barrels and used and abused. So don't worry about it. I Actually, mean, even the barrel. Tony, what's that? Tony makes a good, uh, makes a good argument. Why don't you just make it right out charging? You're going to be using the paddle anyways. Uh, because I am not going to be using the paddle. I am going to be, I find it easier like to slap this tiny little target. It's easier to just grab this when it's at the back. So which would you rather do hit this paddle, which this charging hand. Okay. You move this charging handle over the other side. You could slap the paddle, I guess. Uh, but I prefer, I've been running left charging for the last if that, if, if, you, if you got the if you got the manual of arms yeah. already down, I'm yeah, gonna pop mag that. in and go like that, and up I go. Yeah. What I'd really like to do, my bad lever, it doesn't come quite far back enough. But oh, you mean your with lever? <laughs> with a MIG welder and JB weld, anything is possible. <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I might be putting a bad lever on here of some kind uh, because that would solve that problem because then I just psh, 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 right there, yep. lock open, yep. close right there, right? Um, yep. Which would be nice rather than doing the dance around this ping pong paddle. Um, as much as I Has didn't anyone... want to. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, go, 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 go. Yeah, as much as I didn't want this thing to be good because, uh, you know, the company and the price and all that kind of stuff, um, it, it's the best ar alternative because it is using air barrel air gas tube air bolt and the rest you know I, I i will i will always disagree with you on that because this guy exists <laughs> yeah but this one's magwell is better and yeah you know speaking about the magwell what i wanted to ask you is have you do you know if anybody's making a third party uh bcl magwell um, perhaps, but I don't know if I'll be discussing that on any forums of any kind. <laughs> hmm. That'll be up to the manufacturer. There you go. Uh, nice. did some reloading. I've got, I'm going to be making, uh, you see this little, like, see that little rifle up there? Oh yeah. And that, that is going to be in 300 blackout with the same length barrel. That is non-restricted. Uh, and, uh, so I made up some. 300 blackout rounds to test it with. You're going to shoot a deer in the face with it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to use that tiny little gun to uh, shoot a deer in the face. Uh, what else nice. to do? I had a beer with Tony. He's been commenting here. Uh, he's nice. in town. Yeah. Reloaded some 9 mil. Shot up some gophers this last weekend. Uh, let's see. Got a pal course coming up this weekend. Maple Seed doubleheader the weekend after. Yeah, doing lots of stuff. How about you, Crover? Crazy. Oh, dear God, I am surrounded by guns. So um, let's start with three gun uh, I or match, match, match stuff. Uh, I was planning on upgrading my three gun gear because of deficiencies last year. So with this guy, the Versamax, while it gives me the 7 plus 1 plus 1 capacity and it's done up to the 9s, it's a tack or special. It's got the charging handle. It's got the bolt release. It's got the match saver. High vis. It's got a rear side. So you can shoot slugs with it nice. It's picky on ammo. And that annoyed the fuck out of me last year. Because I finally diagnosed what the problem was last season. Where it just kept like. Didn't like Challenger? Misfeeding. Yeah, it didn't like Challenger. Oh, no, no, no. Um, no guns one. like we'll Challenger. Challenger's no, garbage. no, no, no. It, it, it likes Challenger. Um. Fuck me! It's the it's the brand that uh, Canada First Ammo carries. Score doesn't like score. 
I didn't like score. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, I upgraded to this. <laughs> Veretta 1301 Tactical Marine Edition. Uh, it's Probably a lot lighter, eh? Stuff. Oh, 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 the first time I picked up this gun, I was like, is this a fucking 20 gauge? What the fuck? Uh, nope, it's just it's just not um it's just not a Versa Max. It's just light. It's got the S and J uh plus one extension because it can't be plus two because Canada. Uh the Sukov handguard with adapter, the Maple stock with adapter, the race comb because this thing is got like way too much drop on the stock. Uh and I've got the shell saddle. I just got to find a uh, match saver and it's uh, good to go. So that was the upgrade to the shotgun. Um, I was nervous about running the um, RDB this season again. So I was going to run the Jard 180. That's why I got a nice five time 223 556 reticle Vortex Prism scope, uh, five time scope. Uh, this thing is awesome. Um, but it is a jarred and I was nervous about it. So I kept thinking, how mm -hmm. can I possibly not be nervous about it? And so ugh. come here. Bring bring a backup ugh. jarred? No. <laughs> I just got a bot of brand two instead. That's better. So that'll be the yeah, it's 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 more better. It's way, way, way more better. Um it's the 16 inch uh, model with the bid bag break. This thing is mean. Um, and when you were talking about the bad lever, I was like, who would use a bad lever? And then CISA decided that they were going to build a fucking bad lever into the fucking trigger. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so that's good. It's completely ambi. I have the charging handle on the wrong side for me. And uh, I have continued to use your patented uh, use a Vortex 30 mil ring on my Aimpoint Pro uh trick there adriel works like a son of a bitch nice uh, what else about this gun yeah i took it out this uh, last week friday to um uh, uh make sure that it was actually properly zeroed and uh yeah it's a uh, dead on at 100 and uh with this 3moa dot i also hit 200 meter plates uh, with the same hold because it's 223 and it's a 3moa dot and it doesn't drop because it's a 16 inch barrel, not 14 or 11, or God forbid, one of those ridiculous eight inch barrel ones. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be my gun this season. I have a match coming up. Uh, it's a <laughs> it's a BTSA IPSC style, but not IPSC rifle match on the 28th of April. So it's just IPSC rules, but you don't need to be an IPSC certified whatever black badge or i don't even know what the fuck you need to for it to be a real ipsic match but uh it's gonna be rifle so it's gonna be shooting this anywhere from up close up to uh, the 200 meter range at btsa so i had to double check to see if this could actually perform at those distances and it can and uh, i have it right now set up so that i can have my arm fully extended because if i try to cost the grip this before my thumb is right over the uh, uh backup iron sight and uh I could buy a longer handguard, but they are three hundred and fifty dollars. So fuck that noise. Um, so I just have a grip, and it helps me lock it in. I have the same setup basically with my second backup gun. Uh, hopefully, not too many guns fall to the ground. All right. If for some reason I decide to not use the three thousand dollar rifle. I'm going to use the $1,500 pistol. <laughs> so that's my charger. Right now it's basically how I was running it last season, except with one addition that is incredibly dank. Check it out. Ooh. Yeah. Tandem cross safety. And it is just like pop, pop it in, get it low and ready. Boop, and safe and ready. Boop, and it's just. It's so good. Like it. It's so good. Yeah, uh, I had a buddy of mine uh, who I shot Steel Challenge with showed me his on his Ruger 1022, and I was like, I want that. That is just too too fast not to. Too. Um, that's what I did for match stuff. 
Then on a completely unrelated note, um, I got another barrel for the Thompson Center contender. This guy is in 223. So this is officially now going to be my gopher gun. So this is 223. It's a 21 inch barrel, so I get more velocity, so I can absolutely obliterate the gopher. Uh, and I have a nice less boom, gun. too. Yeah. And uh, it's the Gen 2 uh, contender non restricted frame. So it's got the EC assist. So it's like pop. I need to put my hammer spur on here because it's a little hard to get under there. Yeah. To talk the hammer. Uh, but I have the hammer spur uh, in my parts bin somewhere. Um, and I was going to be having the 44 Magnum barrel on my other contender frame. Um, but I found it difficult to open because it's a Gen 1 frame. So it's got not as easy of an opening already. And it was doing something weird with the uh, ammunition that I was firing. It looked like it looked like overpressure. But in such a way that it wasn't like flattening the primers, it was just pushing into the firing pin channel. So when I would try to open it, like the firing pin would like scrape on the front of the primer and it would make a really mm -hmm. ugly gouge on it. Um, so that's why I decided to ditch that barrel and instead put the 22 Winchester Rimfire Magnum <laughs> on this one. And you're going to love the scope setup on this, Adriel. Just one ring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, that would be fun for uh, for a gopher gun, though. The 22, yeah. 22 WMR. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's it's pointless because I have a 17 HMR. That's actually what I was using for gophers last year. Um, and I mean, it, between 17 HMR, 22 Winchester Magnum and 223, I'm, I'm shooting gophers up to 300 meters, basically. Uh, no problem at all. Um, yeah, I did this with this guy. Um, I expensed that. <laughs> and then I also uh, uh, checked the zero on that four, uh, 357 lever. And it is a shit little fun, to say the least. It is very much something that I want to take out with me next time I go go for shooting. Because last time I had a 357 with me when I was shooting gophers, and believe it or not, 180 grain full metal jacket bullet at about four meters at a gopher doesn't leave a lot for the gopher to, you know, remain together. Um, so that's a little easier to carry than the 24 inch 357 Magnum that I used to have. So that's just a 16 inch uh, saddle ring carbine. Um, and yeah, it just hits a little bit to the left. No, it hits a little bit to the right. And it's dead on with the 357 loads. And I found the zero if I want to try and hit a gopher at 100 meters with it. But I won't because that'd be stupid. If I try to shoot 38s out of it, I could do it, but I won't. <laughs> um, yeah, I double checked that this thing is zeroed, and it is. Um, it's got my nice uh, shadow, too. And funny enough, um, I found the holy <laughs> grail of magazines. I found... The 40 cal mags that feed nine millimeter reliably for the Metgars, Metgars, but specifically the SP01 40 cal are the ones that feed reliably. I saw a guy at uh, at a match last year who was running those mags, and I was like, "Which ones are those?" Because I had tried a couple of other 40 cal CZ75 or Shadow mags. It was specifically the ones that have SP01 on the side 40 cal that actually oh, yeah. can hold. Yes, yeah, CZ SPO one, the full metal bodies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I I tried to I try I bought another couple that had the uh, the big big mag uh, uh, floor plate instead of yeah. having like a pin on them. It's just a big big floor plate. Those ones did not hold nine millimeter. Well, these ones that are crimped from the side, right? They're not they're not pinned. Mm hmm. Yeah, they're crimped. And you found um, that holy grail. My mom ended up finding a CZ Shadow one slide hmm. a slide yeah because she had she has the canadian edition shadow one with the the nickel finish and the red grips but she wanted to put an optic on it without getting rid of the iron sights on her canadian edition slide so she and my dad were looking for a new shadow one slide and they are impossible to find 
And my dad ended up calling around to a bunch of places and found it at, I think, Tesro, where they yes. got it by accident in a shipment of Shadow 2 slides. Because they they were not supposed to get any more of them. Apparently, CZ's oh. not making Shadow 1s anymore. They're not supposed to be making slides or anything anymore. So they got a Shadow 1 slide by accident. And they had to get... They, it took them a month to figure out what to charge my dad for it because they had no <laughs> entry in their system of what it should cost. Interesting. Well, yeah, that's surprising. So was it an optics ready one or was it just... No, it was just a normal... It, it didn't have any sights on it. And my dad just took it to a place that makes a plate that fits in the rear side dovetail. And he oh. brought it in and they fitted it at the shop. But when he brought it into the shop, the owner of the shop's like, where the fuck did you get that? When he told them, he called the shop immediately, called the importer like immediately, and the guys were like, "Yeah, that was the only one we had, and we weren't supposed to have it." <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Yeah, no, that's what of that's basically one of the only non-permanent uh, options for mounting an optic on a handgun nowadays is you can mm -hmm. get a dovetail rear sight mounting plate and then just knock out the rear sight, slide the plate on it, and you have a red dot on your handgun. Since I still haven't bothered replacing the um, fucked up front side of my CZ, I've thought about doing that. Uh, if you want to, Tesro has uh, upgraded sites. They're like fucking two hundred dollars, but Jesus fuck. Yeah, no, Tesro is a shop that I cannot remember how I found. I think I was literally just googling for um, Shadow Two uh, parts, and they happen to have the. Uh, RMO, no, R RMR footprint plate for my Shadow 2 optics ready slide. And so I order that plate from them. And then I keep getting emails. It's like they have the cadet kit for the Shadow 2, and I'm so tempted. But they're so expensive. I know, like I know. And you need to, and I tell you, you exclusively can only use high velocity ammo through it, that like you can't use standard velocity. Yeah. So it's like, fuck, why? Um, yeah, um, I was doing all of that. And then I bought a gun in Toronto and had you ship it to me. Indeed. Indeed you did. Indeed I did. And, uh, as a preview, um, it came with 3d printed mags. <laughs> Have you seen these on gun post, Adriel? You may be muted. Adriel, are you there? Yeah, I'm muted. I just hurry. I was just trying to hit it there, and my dog's whining at me. Yeah. Uh. So it's completely 3D printed. I haven't opened it. I don't know what the spring looks like, but it has a spring, and it even has a 3D printed flow lower. Um, so I bought this because it was an insane <laughs> deal. Um, it, it is a Tika T3X CTR and 6.5 Creedmoor. And I basically got the gun uh, for a new price with 200 rounds through it, I think the guy said, or maybe less than that. Uh, but it came with a break. It came with two extra mags. It came with the scope. It came with rings. It came with a bipod. And that all seemed good until we started digging in a little bit more with Crazy. And we found out where the issues were. Um, first, it turned out it doesn't. It wasn't actually Tika Max because if you don't know, uh, Tika ctr max are like 150 dollars a pop it's stupid ridiculous Those aren't. but the ones yeah, that you have not, there are no these are not 150 dollars but it's interesting because he's got a big one and a small one what's the web set on there like mag 3d yeah it's uh you can get them on gun posts they're on gun posts like i see them all the time on gun posts it's like oh that's kind of neat now i unintentionally test out whether or not they're neat and useful or just neat and garbage um so it has the, Tika uh, ctr short action mag is that that's a short action right 6f creedmoor yep 40 dollars for those mags yep so but so <laughs> they'll be fine as long as you don't abuse them if you abuse them in the cold or something like that they'll break probably i mean but other than that they're probably fine probably i mean we'll, we'll, we'll see we're, we're literally gonna Tika? see nice yeah um so this gun, of course, like the action is like, oh my god! I put a little oil on it, and it's like ridiculous. Um, it's got a big bad bolt handle on it from the factory, which is nice, I guess. Um, it looks like a pretty clear 
free floated barrel on this stock and i don't have a complaint about the tika stock um it even has a bit of a vertical grip already which i'm not a fan of but whatever i put on my patented black hawk cheek ricer uh, i ended up buying like six of these things because i just I, I i literally have one in each one of my guns because of my, my stupid high colombian cheekbones everybody's got one of these fucking things on it now um the vortex rings are great rings and then we get to the scope <laughs> arkin this is a 6 to 24 magnification by 50 millimeter objective $540 scope. Ooh. It is terrible. Terrible. Ooh. You uh at the lowest magnification, you look through it and you're like, why does it look kind of funny? Why is what what's what's on the outside of the objective? Uh I it seems like it's a funny color. I go up to 12 and I look through it and it's like, oh. I see like a blue tint, like a blue halo around the outside. And anything past 20, it's completely useless. Like completely. You can't see shit through it. I've heard that the Arkans were good for the money. Um, that's kind of surprising that it's the chromatic like, aberration is that bad. You can see the chromatic aberrations on the outside when it's at zero, at six magnification. Wow. You turn it up to 12, you clearly see the blue halo around the outside. You turn it to 20 to 24, you can't see shit. It's like it's it, it, it's like it's like uh like somebody smeared like Vaseline over the front. Do you want to try sending it in on warranty? <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's, dude, it's a five hundred dollar optic. But they're not supposed to be that bad. I honestly I I'm, I I think I I I I'm just gonna consider it like a like a beater scope. It's like oh I need to huh. I need a I need a I need to put an optic on something. Well throw the arcan on it. It's funny. And then the biggest issue with this entire thing is that this bad boy has a threaded muscle, and the previous owner put a muscle device on it. Now I'll give you a couple of guesses. I know you guys know already, but if you didn't know. What kind of muscle device would you put on a rifle like that? Well, it's a Tika, so maybe you get a Tika muscle break. Oh, good. Now, Adriel, do you think Tika as a company would make a product that is good and well-designed for their own rifles and put their name on it? I would imagine that they have an expensive factory option. They, they do. It's a very expensive factory option, and uh, they indeed do. And so the previous owner went ahead and did that. And here's the expensive factory option, or rather the heavy expensive factory option. This chunk of metal with giant fuck off buff baffles in it is $180. And it's secure with a fucking set screw. It's a clamp on break. That's clamps fucking on. bullshit. Clamp-on brakes are bullshit for rifles Wait a minute. that have threaded muzzles. Wait a minute. It doesn't even actually thread on the muzzle. It, it, it... thread. No, no. It threads, but the only okay. way to secure it is with the, th the, the, the set screw. Normally you, you use, use like a, a crush washer or a jam it, nut it, or it, something. It, it recesses and it sleeves over the barrel as you thread it in. So you can't use a jam nut. You can't use a crush washer like every fucking muscle device out there and to top it all off they use soft ass screws which when i went to try and take this thing off the the hex screw uh uh screw hole just stripped so i had to pound a torx bit into it uh i pounded mm. the torx bit into it uh, i applied liquid wrench i heated it up for about five minutes with my heat gun and then I hit it with an impact driver, and it just slid right out. Uh, but yeah, um, $180, and this is how Tika attaches muscle devices to their fancy pants $1,600 rifles. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> oh, and by the way, when I say heavy, I'm not kidding. This thing weighs exactly 1.1 pounds. 
That's it's ridiculous. half a kilogram. Half Absolutely a ridiculous. kilogram. Half a kilogram. Well, you've got a nice expensive paperweight now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, you know what? I could technically, I could just go on to a hardware store, find that fucking bolt and just put it on. It, it's functionally and visually identical to the factory one and sell that for 120 bucks and someone will buy it because they're saving mm -hmm. $60. It's ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, do that. Yeah. But, do you have uh, the he, other gun that you got with that? Oh, it's in my work safe downstairs, but just picture <laughs> a really shitty side-by-side -side old Hungarian shotgun. Hey, By hey the way, don't, when I went don't, to... don't you disfeg like that. They make qual high-quality European <laughs> shotguns. You say that, but when I put it together, some piece fell off. <laughs> Uh, I think it's part of the ejectors because only one of the ejectors works. Like it, when you crack it open, both pop out. But if you fire the triggers, only one of them actually ejects. Okay. So then, yeah, it was part of those because the both ejectors work. And apparently there's actually a way to disable the ejectors so that it becomes extractor only. So part of the ejector probably flew out when you. Well, no, I thought that. That it was like a tiny piece. I was like, what the fuck is this? And I sent them a picture to Adrian. And he's like, I don't know what that is. And I was like, well, I was putting together the thing. And then like, it was kind of hard to put together the four, the four and under the barrel. And then when I took it off, like a piece fell out. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But then it fit fine. But then the ejector started being fucky. Yeah. Um, because apparently yeah. you can disable the ejector and have it be just an extractor on that gun. My buddy showed you me might want to do that, went... Adriel, because then, then it'll actually be easier for students to use it for the PAL course. But uh, yeah, I like. When I got given that shotgun, my buddy used to be a firearms instructor before he left the country for like six years. Um, he had a gunsmith disable that so that like the triggers and everything still work, but it doesn't actually shoot. Apparently, I didn't actually test it to see if it shoots. But if you look at pictures of that thing, it's missing things around the firing mechanisms. Yeah, I know. There's uh, there's holes on the side of the gun that shouldn't be there. No, there's supposed to be something there. So the firing mechanism has had something disabled in it so that it My guess is he just function. chopped the front of the firing pins off. I mean, that would be the easiest thing to make I mean, sure I that I assume he took some dead. kind of I think he took some kind of like transfer plate thing out of the firing mechanism there oh, and then just too, threw yeah. them out cuz they're they're nowhere to be found. I looked at this and I'm like I'm never going to be able to find the part to fix this. And I don't no. need a non-functioning gun. And when Adriel yeah. was like, I when Adriel said he was becoming a firearms instructor, I'm like, great. That was what this what gun was for, was for being used as an instruction gun. Yeah. And so I just sent it out to you guys in Alberta so they can actually see some use. Because yeah. I don't need it. So Tony's saying if I wanted recoil reduction, why wouldn't I leave the brake on? He's like, You're right. I mean, except it doesn't really have recoil because it's a fucking 6.5 Creedmoor. And the gun already weighs like nine pounds. Yeah, that weight's going to do a lot. But if you put a brake on it too, you'd be able to sight like long range shots. Oh, and, and that's the thing. Once you once you reminded me of the Spectre Ballistics brake and I texted, I texted Tristan and he's like, yeah, ours only weighs 89 grams. It's like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's... <laughs> that's as easy as it gets for a sale. It's like, oh, I get you order add... one yet? Uh, no, no, I'll I'll make an order. I'm gonna get oh, if you order anytime soon. Let me know because I want another two two three break from them. Sure. I mean, I need pro. I, I could probably put up. I got this Michelic break on this thing right now, and it's a little Ooh. bit heavy, and it's like it's painted white to match my AR. But oh, hey, that kind of reminds me of something, <laughs> Adriel. That reminds me of something. <laughs> this one's lighter than that. It's not a pound. <laughs> no, I was like, because when I picked up the rifle the first time, I was like, wow, I get this. this is a target rifle, but it seems really front heavy. And then I, I was looking at that break going, is it actually a pound? Like, it looks like something that could weigh a pound. And I finally found a, a spec sheet on it at Gotenda of all places. So I felt gross clicking on the link, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, it sure shit says uh, in the specifications that it weighs 0 0.5 kilograms. 
Yeah. It is literally a pound of weight that I can shave off of that gun by taking that thing off. Well, and then it also, I think, came with two snap caps. Not that those are oh, yes, it came with two snap caps. Uh, like the world's most terrible wish.com bipod um, and <laughs> a trigger lock and a sling. Actually, it comes with a sling, too. So like like yeah the guy was like the, the guy basically sold me a new rifle with a break two shitty mags one shitty sling one shitty bipod a pair of good rings and one terrible scope for the price of a new gun Yeah the good sling's deal. functional the bipod I assume is functional <laughs> It's it's I don't know what is on the knob but every time I turn it, my fingers come out gray, like <laughs> some kind of grease. It's like I said, it's... he was Russian who owned it. <laughs> the world's shittiest rifle. But yeah, no, that's uh, that's been it, really. Uh, I'm really looking forward to my first match of the season. Steel Challenge starts this week here in uh, Calgary at uh, CDTSA. And because that happened, I sent them an email asking, hey, I applied to join your range and I never heard back. So what happened? And they go, oh, yeah, uh, we sent you invitations for an orientation in 2021. And then you never replied. So we took you off the list. I'm like, let me check that. I applied in 2018 got confirmation in 2020 that they were going to send invitations either i never got them or i ignored them also possible but at the end of that email that i reply that that, that replied to me is like oh yeah and you can sign up again if you want and i was like i know i sent another application in <laughs> and i checked and i sent another application in november of last year so i'm like dude come on just just let me in i don't want to wait three more years to get into CDTSA, just let me throw money. I at think you. I, I think uh, they've already told you to fuck off. <laughs> they have, uh huh. But I also happen to be shooting a lot of three gun with like basically every member of the board. So hopefully somebody no remembers my name and they, like, they oh, do right, like Dave, that guy. Three thung three gun matches a year. Well, I guess you want the long range, right? If you get the long range, then you could actually. I want the long rifle. range, and I want to not pay five dollars every time I go and shoot Steel Challenge. I want to buy a bulk uh, clip of like twenty five. Guess like twenty five. Like it, uh, they have a punch card. Sorry, I want to buy a punch card for like twenty bucks and get thirty shots or thirty uh, Steel Challenge events because it's five bucks to shoot a steel challenge every time and i was like i don't want to do that i just want to buy a punch card and literally go every single time i can um you should do steel challenge adriel <laughs> i have done we do it at uh so my uh one of my local ranges here shared park they do thursday night fun shoots and on the thursday night fun shoots sometimes yeah. it's three guns sometimes it's actually pistol sometimes it's steel challenge it just varies that's an excellent way yes. of like uh, crazy you're mentioning like uh, uh, different ways to start shooting more dynamic stuff you start a, a, fu a fun night uh, you take a bay as long as you got like 12 20 people's kind of a thing you can do whatever you want to on it right as long as the range like gives their their uh, okay yeah. on it and then you can you know you can do that kind of stuff as long as you have an RO and you're like no they're all, all, all ROed and we have a match director and Yada yada yada. Then you can do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Um, what's there for news? What happened since August of last year when we did our last episode? <laughs> uh, apparently, you need a license to buy a magazine and major firearm parts now. Does yes, and yet? it is now illegal to be in possession. Yeah, it is now illegal to be in possession of ammunition without a firearms license. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, thank you. We'll about... be back in six months. <laughs> there's uh there's 60 call agents at the CFP. Yep. That's someone someone put an A tip in for that. Yep. 60 whole agents yep. for the whole CFP. They did put some budget items into budget 2024 on gun buyback, but I don't think it's enough to buy anything back, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, they, they've <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't see. I haven't fucking given a shit about the budget. They're not going to fucking get it. God damn. There was money in there. There was $30.4 million over two years for the buyback of assault style firearms. Uh, but that doesn't. Maybe that's going to buy them back for the business. They've spent $42 million up to this point and have purchased nothing. $30 million over two years is basically just to continue spending at their current rate to do nothing. Yeah. Well, they so got to pay. A, they got to pay IBM for drafting a proposal about what they could do. Yeah, you got to draft RFPs and stuff, right? They yeah, have a like staff. Have they they have fucking... staff over there for the for the buyback. They I think they have a staff of thirty or forty or something like that. So there's thirty or forty people in an office somewhere, circle jerking about how they can buy guns back, but not actually buying anything back. Just talking about how to. I'd imagine they're just drow- browsing porn like twenty four seven. Well, what we can hope is that everyone is act- every one of them is actually a gun owner, and they're deliberately wasting the government's time and money on this. <laughs> it's like, oh no, no, we 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 we, we got to revise the draft. Uh, a new gun just launched, and we got to see if it's actually something that we could ban. <laughs> yeah, huh. at nauseum. <laughs> oh, they, and they're, they're, every year they just sit around waiting for shot show coverage and go, okay, let's see how we can delay this a little more. <laughs> but uh, yeah, another thing they've they've kicked the election back. They're playing. They're trying to kick the election back another week in October of 2025, which would make the election happen after the next expiration of the amnesty. In this case. Oh, but so that was that wasn't the reason. Promise. The reason why they did that was because they wanted to get their pensions. Pensions. Yeah, they voted because for... they were oh, like pensions. three days short on pensions uh, for for that. And yeah, that uh, they they claim it's for Diwali, but or I think some fucking holiday from that. But like they had an election on a Jewish holiday, and when Jews complain, they just said, "We'll get fucked too bad. Go to the early <laughs> polls." So. Uh, it's a crock of bullshit. What? It's all about the pensions. Wow, that's that's actually quite amazing. That's quite surprising. But then again, so is a ride camp. But that's another topic. Anyways, <laughs> fucking um, don't don't. That was bait, and you almost took it. That was bait, that was and you bait. almost took it. I just love that it was a PPC <laughs> candidate who's <laughs> the one who's done all of that. oh it's great it's great um what are your plans for this summer because we're probably only going to talk after the summer is over (laughs) uh hopefully shoot more idpa shotgun uh get a new car and not have money for anything else um you could also just move (laughs) i i could that is a possibility that would still not necessarily yeah, Adriel mean said that he was going to get you a job. Yeah, Adriel said he'd get you a job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're out here. It doesn't have to be in the city. Don't want outside the city. <laughs> Got to move oh, to a God. small town, Alberta. Move to small town, Alberta. Ooh, right right in the heart of Dude. convoy country. <laughs> Dude. Let's go. Everyone will be armed. Kate, like in Alberta, I think it's like 10 or 15 percent of, uh, of, of the population has got a pal in. But that's not the same in the city. It's like five percent, four percent. It's low in the countryside. It's everyone. Every house has has guns and only half of them have a license for it. <laughs> no, you probably have like one person in the house that has a license <laughs> for it. Oh no! I meant only half the households have a license for oh, it. Don't oh, don't worry. Man. I've been. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't worry. I've been. I've been to those houses where they go like, "Oh yeah," and uh, we know we thought we might as well get the license finally. <laughs> I've when I worked at sale, I had people come in and be like, "So, uh, what do you need to be able to buy a gun now?" Like I might have gotten one thirty years ago, and I'm like, "Well, to even own a gun, you need a license," and they went. Oh, good thing I don't own any and haven't been hunting the last 30 years. Yeah. No. Yeah. Never have. Or they, they got a Never gun have. from their dad like 10 years ago. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> Finally make it legit. I, I had someone show me an FAC that expired in 1984 and ask me if it was still valid to buy ammo with. 
I get it. And when I, I said no, old. his response was, I got people out east he'll sell it to me. And I'm like, oh. Well, that's okay. Nice. Come that's on, right. get out of there, yeah. stupid. I don't know what the fuck. Honestly, we had what one question like. from Parat, I think, who wanted uh, oh. <laughs> us to basically talk about why three slash five shot groups are bullshit and everyone should uh, move to 20 shot groups as a standard. And I mean, 20 is a little bit excessive. Um, rapid I, fire, too. 20 rounds rapid fire at, at 500 yards because we were discussing this on, on, on the Discord about how everybody should be able to make hits uh, at 500 yards iron sighted. And if you can't, then you're just terrible. You know what? These have an actual spring on them. What did you expect hmm. it to be 3D printed as well? <laughs> well, no, I thought it was like a coat hanger job, but this looks legit. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, like three to five shot groups don't really give you the full pick, especially three shot is functionally worthless for giving you a good group size. I do. Excuse kind of me, agree. my grandpappy did three shots to sight in his Dur rifle. Yeah, well, your grandpappy's that's why your grandpappy never shot no Dur. Um, <laughs> I take offense to that. <laughs> but uh, they're all close. Your, your grandpappy was too busy shooting communists, given where you're from. <laughs> 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 but uh yeah i i do agree kind of with nine hole reviews and the idea that you need a larger group size is better and that nine to ten rounds gives you an actual proper idea because three rounds you don't get a whole lot of meaningful data out of it five rounds a bit more i do kind of agree yeah nine to ten rounds is going to give you a much better idea of the rifle's accuracy like realistically realistically these nuts in your mouth <laughs> don't threaten me with a good time <laughs> yeah i get what he's saying um he's posting some really interesting groups he's got a fancy pan 308 um that he it, it, like he's he's making a load for it and one of the things that jumped out at me without having discussed this first with him is like, oh, yeah, check this out. It's a great group. And he shows me a group. Right? This is a target bench gun with hand loads. And it's like an inch group. I'm like, why Why are you like that? And it's like, why do you, why do you, why, that's like a sub MOA gun. And he goes, yeah, it's an inch group of like 20 shots. And it's all in an inch. That's good. Was that at a hundred? Yeah. Yeah, but like, think about it. Like 20 trigger pulls, all of the things you could fuck up. And you still keep it all 20 shots inside yeah. of that inch. That's actually good. Now, when you think about it, your natural reaction is like, like what I said, is like, well, why is that good? It's like, it's like, that's to be like a sub MOA gun. But even fucking up, even making mistakes, everything is landing in that inch. Well, I mean, with some of these fucking bench rest guns, you're basically removing yourself from the equation with a lot of them. Like, all you're doing is pulling a trigger, and the gun's pretty much resting itself on itself. Yeah, like, that, that, that's 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 one of the things. Like, this last Friday when we met with some friends of mine, uh, and he, he finally, like... <laughs> Got it. God, God bless him. He got his license with me. He's an old high school friend, and he went and he got himself a Savage Axis II, thirty odd six. <laughs> nice. That'll do it. Yeah. Except he spent money and bought an MDT chassis for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why does MDT make a chassis for that? <laughs> it no, it's no, it's a Savage Long Action. That's it. I mean, yeah, it's a Savage Long Action. So it's just oh. yeah, it's a Savage Long Action action, and I'm like. But why? Because <laughs> it's it's like a it, it looks like a bench gun until you look and it's got a real skinny barrel on it. <laughs> but he torqued it down and he got himself a fantastic Chinese ninety dollar scope. And uh, a it it has holds it has held zero so far and the tracking tracks. Because we took some shots and he was eight inches high and five inches left. And I said, okay, that's a quarter MOA. So that's 20 clicks right. And what's four times eight? 
32. Okay. Click, 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 click. Bullseye. I was like, told you. <laughs> Just had to do the math. It checks out. Yeah. It, uh, it, 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 it the, the, the scope tracking works and uh, it is held up. And uh, then he was talking about fucking uh, putting an M carbo trigger on it. And I was like, uh, like, a, like a spring kit on it. And I was like, but why? And then somebody tells me, oh, they're like five bucks for the in carbo spring kit for the axis. I was like, oh. And it makes a huge difference. It takes them down yeah. like ridiculously light. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like factory is like a six pound trigger with the M carbo. It's like five. It, it's like three. So it's like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. For five bucks. Yeah. Do it. Do it. And then I told him, then put the stock back on that gun and buy yourself like a savage. I don't know precision or something. Not up, no, no, not savage precision. Like a savage hog hunter or something with like a meat, like a meaty barrel yeah, on like it, and then put like that on there. Yeah, like the one tenths or something that's got like a chunky barrel on it, threaded muscle, and then we can play. The but yeah, uh, that's what I'm playing. When when Cabela's has them on sale, they have they have the twelve FDs on sale. It's a blind mag, like heavy barrel uh really great rifle for uh if you want to do that kind of stuff just target practice i think i'll tell him about those yeah that is a 12 fb right v v is in victor yeah 12 v yeah yeah i'll tell him about those because yeah like i've seen those and it's like yeah you, you it's it like it, it's a again it's a several so i'm always gone it's it's what the fact like the, the industry has agreed upon that if you're going to make a bolt action it's got to be sub moa so even if it's a deer rifle, it's sub MOA. But it just needs but that little again, bit of that's, meat. That's the thing of sub MOA is a three shot sub MOA guarantee from every company. So yeah, true. Yeah, uh, that's what they're guaranteeing there. Yep. Yeah. Anything else before we leave it for uh, the summer? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I did also get the. Um, the new master mount side mount for my type 81 Oh, um, nice! because I had the old hair and arms one with the pick rail and it was off center. So I got that. I still have to put it on. I bought a one inch um, recoil pad for my type 81 and uh, it was laughably, I got the small and it was still laughably too large to fit on that <laughs> stock. So I secured it to that stock with zip ties and duct tape. <laughs> As it should as it should just just as the communist god intended <laughs> just now i can have God's all i gotta do now is get some shitty belarusian fucking side mount four times scope and i will have like beautiful tarkov larp I, I i i gotta be honest with you i only got that thing purely for the ak aesthetics i'm not even sure if i'm actually gonna shoot it that's why i want the underfolder is because i'm like that is that is like fucking amazing like <laughs> shitty ak aesthetic but it's just so impractical and i don't have 1100 dollars to spend on a second type 81 oh did he die? and they're terrible they're terrible to shoot too i well, you don't find mine that. to be all that bad to be oh the under no the under the oh, under yeah. folder i the shot under an ak i shot an under folder ak in poland and it was fucking terrible <laughs> yeah yeah they they are all the terrible it it was absolutely you get no cheek well like there's people printing 3d printed cheek rests for these so that you can get an actual cheek weld on the stock because yeah but then bad. you lose the aesthetic yeah it, it's still functional and there was that one guy making like pistol red dot mounts for the type 81 that are slim enough that they will clear the underfold on the on the stock and uh, you can tell that guy who, on gun posts is going to be making a bunch of money from people buying the underfolders. I have five sets of 1911 grips. <laughs> Do you have a 1911 still? I have two. I have one in nine millimeter and I have one in 22. I mean, I do have three sets of grips for my Smith and Wesson <laughs> revolver. Because I have the ones it came with, the ones I actually use on it, and the rosewood grips that I bought for the aesthetic. Oh, yeah. 
the rosewoods that's that's a nice aesthetic to add on oh though. they're so beautiful and they're shit to actually shoot with of course of course oh man i gotta clean this i gotta clean this garbage out anyways i don't know what happened to dave he seems to have yeah he's coming back here oh maybe not oh, <laughs> oh. no i'm here just shut Those it down probably watching. bye everybody see you next summer yeah see you maybe 